restless soul with a painful secret. Is anyone there? Attempts to make contact with the living. All of a sudden, I heard the piano play by itself. Is this simply a ghost in distress? There was a teenager in town who fell off of a water tower. There was lots of different rumors about what had happened. He didn't fall. He was pushed. Or an evil entity out for revenge. We were mortified. We didn't know what to do. There's something not human in our house. There was someone in here, Dad. I'm not crazy. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. Outside of New Haven lies the quintessential all-American town. Campbell is a nice little beach town. It has a lot of tourists in the summer, so it gets busy. But during the winter, there's not a lot of people, but we have great schools and a very nice little community. And Macy Sherman is the typical all-American teenager. We all know each other. We've all grown up together, and we are like a little family. Campbell is my safe haven. It's like nothing ever happens. But in 2014, the year of her 17th birthday, that all changed. Mom? Dad? Kelsey, is anyone there? What a fun morning. Yeah. Happy birthday, darling. Hey. Macy sits down to a birthday celebration with her parents and younger sister. Now, my family and I were all very close, and I do feel super lucky to be so close to them. I would describe Macy as my little working girl. She's very ambitious. I'm very proud of her. Oh, this is so cute. I helped mom pick it out. Thank you. Me and Macy are typical sisters. I mean, sometimes we're best friends and sometimes we're enemies, but she's always there for me when I need her. She's a good person. And this one is from me. Macy is a wonderful child. She's very smart. She's outgoing, adventurous, loves to laugh. Oh. Mom, it's beautiful. Thank you. Oh. The locket has been fitted with photos of Macy and her mother, Carrie, both at age 17. Side by side, their resemblance is almost eerie. I love it. Thank you. Look. Who is that? That's mom, you dork. That's me on my 17th birthday. Wow, you guys could be twins. Yeah. Macy resembles me when I was her age. She has dark hair, freckles, hazel eyes, same as I do. I love it. I can't wait to try it on. Nigel's going to love it. <sighs> hey, help me get my stuff, OK? That night, Macy meets up with friends. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Almost yeah, legal. Yeah. Let's drink to that. All right. You do too. I yeah. have a present for you, but I forgot it. Thanks. <laughs> what? That How could you forget it? Hey. Well, we're, I didn't want to lose it out here. Thank um, you. What did you put in this? Uh, I don't know. I <laughs> forgot your present. Maybe. <laughs> you totally would. Guys, guys, this is a really cool spot. 
I've never been here before. You've never been to the water tower? <laughs> I thought everybody knew about this place. So then you've probably never heard the story of the Campbell water tower. The real story? Wasn't it some kid fell off the tower and it was all mysterious? <laughs> like the police could never figure out what really happened. I learned about what happened at the water tower one night and how there was a boy who tragically died there and this is the first time that I heard about it. The tragedy happened nearly 25 years prior when Macy's parents were in high school. Well, that's just it. You know, he didn't fall. He was pushed. And they say that his murderer is still running loose around Campbell till this day. I think it hurts something. Oh, please. <laughs> She's, why are you so laughing lying. at me? You're, You're so lying. dramatic. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Shut up. You are a fool. That's why you fail all your quizzes. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> but how do y'all think you did on the English quiz? Hey, Mom. Yeah. I said I know, OK? I, sorry. OK, I'm coming. I know. I know. OK, bye. Are you OK? Old school. Totally old school. Hey, we need to go. What? No, no way, it's early. My mom wants me home. We have to go. Go, but we just got here. And besides... In just a minute, I'll be in no shape for driving. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Hey, Macy, don't be like that! Oh, yeah. Hi. Oh, Happy birthday. birthday. I walked down the street and I just heard footsteps. Charlotte, is that you? I was kind of hoping it was one of my friends trying to sketch me out or something. Just felt this presence. I could just feel it behind me, and like the hair on the back of my neck was standing up. Seventeen-year-old Macy Sherman senses that she's being followed. I knew I felt something else with me. Whoa! Oh my you God. okay? Mom, you scared the crap out of me. Where's Nigel? I thought he was dropping you off. No, he's, he's still at the party. Party? I thought you were going to the movies. Where were you? It was after the show. We went to a party in the woods by the old water tower. The water tower. What were you doing there? Macy, I don't want you hanging out any place near there. Why? Around the time that I was in high school, there was a teenager in town who fell off of a water tower. There was lots of different rumors going around about what had happened at the water tower, but nobody knew for sure because I said so. My mom didn't want to talk about it, I think because she didn't want to scare me. The 
The following morning, Macy prepares for a typical busy day. During high school, I was on a lot of sports teams. I hung out with my friends a lot. I wasn't sitting at home. We were always out doing something, whether it was hiking or going to the movies. We went to concerts. I was just brushing my hair that I saw the closet light was on. It was very weird because I never turn it on. The light from my room is on enough where I don't need to use the closet light. Macy's boyfriend calls to check on her. What do you want? No, you were being a jerk. I had to walk home by myself on my birthday. I gotta go. Okay, I'm late. My eyes were off that brush for probably 20 seconds. And I came back and it was gone. I knew I put it on my dresser. And I just, I looked for it everywhere and I couldn't find it. Macy, let's go, you're gonna be late. Macy, I'm coming. There's no explanation for this, so I was just like, whatever. One night, Carrie's husband, Mike, works the late shift, leaving his wife in charge. With Mike being gone so much, I was the one who always had to take care of the kids, take care of the house. I started hearing somebody walking up and down the stairs. Hello? Somebody there? I thought somebody had come in the door, so I yelled out to see if anybody was there. Is somebody there? and nobody responded back to me. I looked up and down the stairs, looked in all the rooms, looked everywhere, and there was nobody in the house. I thought maybe I was just hearing something. There was a large mirror that sits in our foyer and just was resting up against the wall. What was weird is that it sounded like the mirror crashed and smashed into a million pieces, but it didn't. After Carrie Sherman finds a fallen mirror still intact, strange events begin unfolding in her once peaceful household. 
I started to notice more and more of hearing footsteps going up and down the stairs. Lights would go off by themselves. I was a little nervous, perplexed, because of the weird things that were going on. The amount of times that it was happening was starting to increase. Carrie is not the only member of the family who feels uneasy. Her daughter, Macy, has been sensing a presence in her room. I was coming home from school to change for field hockey, and no one was home. My parents were both working. My sister was still at school. Kelsey? When I heard the laughter, I kind of did like a double take. And I was like, did I just hear that? Stop screwing around. Suddenly, Macy spots her missing hairbrush. I was really shocked when I saw my hairbrush in the corner. It was just really strange to find it there. I really had no idea what was going on. I tried to ignore the feeling that there was something in the house that could have been a ghost. And I tried to say, oh no, like, you're just being scared. Like, just stop. For the next few days, Macy is on edge. It was late one night, and I was coming home, and the lights were on the garage. Hey, Dad? My dad is a mechanic, but he also does a lot of things on the side, so it's completely normal for him to be out in the garage. Hey, Dad. Sorry I'm late. I was with Charlotte. I just didn't check the time. I was like, Dad, like, hello, like, hi, I'm home. I'm going to go take a shower and go to bed, OK? Night. I got no answer, and I was like, OK, like, whatever. Hey, you're just in time to help me with the dishes. I was very shocked that I saw him, and I started freaking out. Are you messing with me? I, I, I swear, I just saw you in the garage. And he was like, no, I've been up here. I just finished up a car a couple of hours ago, and then your mother put me to work here. She goes, I swear, you were out there. You were working in the garage. No, I, I, was, I was talking to you. You were there. I really thought that was my dad. Like, I was very convinced it was my dad. She was uh, freaked out quite a bit. Here, Macy. To me, that was like, okay, it's a little odd. She caught a sighting. There's nobody in there. Look, I'm sure you thought you saw something, but whatever it was, it wasn't me. I saw something with my own two eyes, and I, I knew what I saw. I was trying to rationalize it rather than, you know, think it was something paranormal. I never kind of really believed in that. Come on. Bedtime. Dad, there was someone in here. 
I was almost in tears because I was so scared. Once it started registering in my head, it got more creepy. I really started to believe that there was something else, maybe not human, in our house. I'm not crazy! For weeks, Macy Sherman has felt an unsettling presence watching her every move. Whatever was in the house was targeting me, and I don't know why, but that's exactly how I felt. I didn't want to talk about it because it was just an unreal experience. I felt very isolated and a little bit alone because I didn't want everyone to be like, you're crazy. That weekend, with her father out of town and her mother working, Macy makes plans to stay at a friend's. I never wanted to go home. Like, I would always stay out as late as I could. Like, I stayed away from the house as much as possible. Where are you going? You're leaving again? Mom and Dad are going to kill you. Mom and Dad aren't here. And I'm not staying in this house. You're never here anymore. It's not fair. I was sad and kind of angry because she never wanted to be home. Please don't leave me. Not by myself. Look, something's going on in this house. Something not right. Just please, just don't tell mom. I promise I'll text you. I thought something was weird. I mean, I didn't really understand it, but I can tell my sister's freaked out. I had this old radio, and the radio started scrolling through the channels by itself. <laughs> the music would just stop, and then another song would come on on a different station, and then it would do it again. Mom, is that you? Is anyone there? All of a sudden, I heard the piano play. I walked into the room, and the piano was playing by itself. I 
I stopped in my tracks. I was so scared that I couldn't breathe, but I was just in shock. Nobody was in the room with us. It was just Kelsey and I, and we could see the keys playing. <laughs> We were mortified. We were shaking. She was crying. We didn't know what to do. It was very overwhelming for both of us. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and that was my defining moment where I knew that something was going on in our house and that it was more than any light going on and off, any footsteps in our house. There was really something. The women of the house decide to call a meeting where Macy finally shares her side of the story. And then one day I put my hairbrush down and we talked about everything that has happened to us and it all kind of came together. I find it later in the back of my closet. As at first it was just me and I didn't realize that like, okay, well it's not affecting the rest of my family, but now it is. I thought it was Kelsey, but then when I actually went into the closet, there was no one there. Kelsey, tell her what happened to you. I was in my room listening to my radio, and all of a sudden, it just changed channels to this weird music. And then I went downstairs. And the piano was playing by itself. I walked in, and I saw it, too. We all kind of combined our stories and figured it out that there definitely was a spirit in our house. But I've been hearing footsteps, and then the mirror fell off the wall. The girls and I really started to get nervous and worried because we didn't know what to expect. It's gonna be okay. Mike wasn't home, so it was just us three that had to deal with whatever was going on at the house. That night, Mike returns from his trip. Hey, you're home. Hi, babe. Yeah, we were able to wrap things up early. I'm glad I'm back. Carrie decides to hold off on telling him what's been going on until the morning. Come to bed. Mike, you're freezing. Get over here and warm up. I love you. I love you too. Carrie Sherman believes her house is haunted, but is trying to find the right time to tell her husband. I was laying in bed, and Mike walked into the bedroom. I was really nervous to tell him what was going on in our house at that time. I love you. I love you, too. And when I rolled over, he was no longer there. Carrie called me. She's like, where are you? And I said, we're already down in New Jersey. New Jersey? Are you OK? Carrie? No, you were just here. You were in the room. She was freaking out. She said, I could swear you were in bed next to me. Carrie, maybe it's just a bad dream. Carrie. I didn't know what was going on. Hey, hello? You think of a ghost. You think of an apparition. You don't think of something tangible that you can feel. But I knew that I was not dreaming. There was somebody in the bed with me. I can't even describe how terrified I was. Gary, what's going on? Gary! Uh, 
After Mike comes home, Carrie describes how his family has been living in fear oh and tries to convince her husband they need help. It's gonna be okay. Mike, something's wrong with the house. There are things that are happening, things that we can't explain. What are you talking about? The piano played by itself. And Macy is afraid to go into her own room. And last night, something was in bed with me. I told you, it was a nightmare. Don't be so dramatic. I do believe in the spirits and stuff, but I never thought of them as, you know, ghosts going through your home, moving things, or, you know, turning on light switches. No, you're not listening. I'm terrified, and the girls are terrified. We need to get some help. What do you want me to say, Carrie? That the house is haunted? That ghosts live here? Is that it? Come on, don't be ridiculous. It was extremely frustrating because he's the man of the house. He should be the one that's taking care of the situation. OK. I'm sorry. You're right. Don't worry. We'll fix this. At that point, Mike was accepting to having somebody come into our house and see what was going on. <laughs> After enduring strange occurrences for months, the Shermans reach out to professionals. The name of the paranormal group is Ghosts of New England Research Society, Gorners for short. And our mission is to help people who are troubled by paranormal activity in their lives. Come on in. We're going to be going through your house room by room to see if we can pick up any sense of paranormal activity. We were finally going to get answers to the questions that we had been experiencing all along. Were we, you know, really seeing this? Was this really happening in our house? Kurt? The psychic medium's sixth sense leads her to Macy's room. I immediately felt that pair of eyes on me, and so I thought to myself, OK, now I've got to find it, because it's going to be a game of hide-and-go-seek all night long. And it's going to either show itself immediately, or it's going to hide. We are here in the Sherman House in Campbell, Connecticut. It is. 3.38 p.m., and Karen has sensed something in Macy's room. Karen senses that the spirit has a special connection with Macy. Since it's latched on to Macy, why don't we have her talk to it? My impression was that whomever or whatever it was was enamored with her. What would I even say? Just ask a question. Are you the one that keeps turning the light on in my closet? Yes. And you could hear it as easily as you and I talking. Who are you? I said to him, who are you? What do you want? And I heard, I'm Sean. So I said, OK, Sean, what do you want to say to us? Because clearly, you want to be heard. Suddenly, Karen has a vision. Through her eyes, Sean recounts the story of what happened to him and another boy at the local water tower nearly 25 years ago. Dude, come on. Don't be such a little baby. I don't know, man. I don't want to get in trouble. Live a little.
You've never seen Campbell until you've seen the view from up here. Pretty great, right? Do you come up here a lot? I'll bring a girl or two. It's a long way down. Come on, let's get out of here. For more haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. Who are you? Psychic medium Karen Hollis has made contact with the ghost haunting the Sherman house. Through a vision, Sean describes the tragedy that took place at the local water tower years ago. It's a long way down. Come on, let's get out of here. Don't let me go. I won't. Hold on. What's going on? Karen, what did you see? I saw a boy. What I saw was a body falling off of the water tower. I remember that when we were in high school. Carrie recalls the moment she found out the boy fell to his death. I grew up with him. Uh, he was a couple years younger than me. I mean, I saw him around the school and everything. Everybody was so shocked that his life ended in such a tragic way. But there's more to Sean's story. What else do you want to show me? I then asked uh, Sean in my mind's eye, all right, Sean, so tell me what happened to you. After his friend died, Sean was wrecked with guilt for convincing him to climb the water tower in the first place and fell into a depression. He showed me a scene of him sitting in this car that he was just weeping, just tears of desperation. I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. I never should have made you go up there. Sorry. He then just showed me blackness, just dark. In that moment, Karen knows that Sean has passed away, but it isn't clear whether or not it was accidental or intentional. I knew that he had died tragically, but I didn't know, like, why or exactly what happened to him. Karen gathers the group to discuss her theories. After Sean and his friend died, Sean's guilt prevented him from resting in peace. He was bound here by the tragedy that came about. He was just devastated about what had happened at the water tower. The investigators believe that Sean mistook Macy for her mother, whom he remembered from high school. Macy, we believe the night that you went to the water tower is the night that Sean followed you home. 
It's all started to make sense to me then. And I started to think I look a lot like my mom did in high school. But why did Sean sometimes appear as Mike? Karen explains that because ghosts are pure energy, they can shape shift, taking on different personalities, voices, and even the human form. They want to feel that human touch again, the way that they used to when they were alive. But he doesn't want to hurt you. He doesn't even want to scare you. It's as if he wants to be part of the family. I do believe Sean misses his life here on Earth, and I do believe that he meant no harm in the end. So what do we do now? Well, there are a couple of options. But in a case like this, I'd say just learn to live with it. The best recommendation I made to the Sherman family was to coexist with it. When I asked him, do you intend to leave, the feeling that I got from him was just, you know, I'm here for now. You can't make a spirit go anywhere. I don't believe that you can force something um, if it has a purpose here. And I think that once Sean gets his fill of being part of that family, he'll cross over like any other spirit would. While things have quieted down at the Sherman house, unusual events continue to occur. But the family has made peace with Sean. We hear something, you know, a light switch go on. We just accept it, and, and it's just part of us. We live with it every day. It's different than a normal lifestyle, knowing that there's something there. But I think that it's good that he finds comfort in our home. My experience with the paranormal is that there are good spirits that just want their stories told. There are bad spirits that just want their stories told. But we were fortunate enough to be the family that had a good spirit. I do feel more comfortable in my house. I've made amends with Sean. He hasn't bothered us as much now that I think we know. And I think like that's all he wanted. mother senses something amiss in her home. There was something in that room with me. When a mysterious entity targets her family. There's just a black silhouette standing there, staring back at you. The demon unleashes a reign of fear in which no one is spared. Honey? It gave me that feeling that what's going to happen next, that like horror movie, when the music starts, you know something's about to go down. But you don't know when or where. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see. Someone's in my room. And the things we fear. There are doors when they are open. Nightmares become reality. In June 2013, Jacinda Rierick is recovering from back surgery. I had to repair some herniated discs, some degenerative disc disease. It's just very hard to accept, you know, being so healthy and then all of a sudden having a procedure that, you know, you're hoping is going to fix your pain and then you end up being worse than what you were. Baby. Yeah. Are you trying to break your back again? Come on. Jacinda's husband, Todd, a maintenance and repairman at a local brewery, is also a patient caregiver. All right. Okay. All right. 
Todd and I are high school sweethearts, and we've always, you know, had a very loving relationship. You keep going like this, and you're never going to recover, sweetheart. He's the kind of person that would give you the shirt off his back. He'll do anything for anybody. I'm going to be fine. I thought... Well, you just thought wrong. Hey, Justin! Yeah? Keep an eye on your mom today. If she gets back out of that bed, you have my permission to tie her down in it. <laughs> you got it. Have a great day, Dad. Their 19-year-old son, Justin, who recently graduated from high school, works at a hardware store in town. Justin is a wonderful kid. Just one step at a time. <laughs> he is so caring and compassionate. You got it? My relationship with my mom, I'd say that we're really close. I can talk to her about anything, and she's she's right there for me. And she's just, she's my mom. I mean, I love her to death. The Rierick family live in central Pennsylvania. Montana's really small. Not a lot happens. You could drive by it and miss it. It's a quiet town. It's a close-knit community. Kind of everybody knows everybody. Everybody looks out for everybody. The family moved from a mobile home to a three-bedroom house when Justin was just a boy. Moving into the house was something that I always dreamed of. Just because you want to be able to raise your family in a home, we all enjoyed each other's company and enjoyed living in the neighborhood. For Jacinda, the hardest part of recovery is not the pain, but filling the time. Being so sedentary and confined to the house, it was very difficult to not let myself, you know, fall into a depression. After I had this back surgery, I got my digital camera out and started looking through the pictures, and it was of Justin's graduation. I was noticing these balls of light. They were all different sizes. Um, some had rings around, some didn't, some were solid white, some were purple. I felt that they were orbs. Jacinda has a suspicion as to what the orbs could represent. I know by reading and watching TV that a lot of people said that they were um, spirits or angels, and it just intrigued me even more. I immediately just assumed it was my parents. I was very close with both my mom and my dad, and the thought of these balls of light orbs being my parents, it was really comforting to me. I thought maybe they were with me during all my health issues. Honey, I'm running late. But, but look at these pictures of Justin. And, uh, look at all these little balls of light in every single picture. Isn't that weird? It looks camera flares, right? I don't think so. I just took a picture of myself. And look, Honey, I'm... there's one right there. I but love you. I gotta go. There... I'll look at him tomorrow, I promise. Oh, okay. Go. Okay, see ya. I always believed in the paranormal, and these balls of light really piqued my curiosity and my interest. Jacinda decides to document any evidence of the supernatural in her home. I just was taking pictures all the time, just seeing if I could catch them, and I always got orbs. They were just there all the time, everywhere. I had that feeling that something was right behind me.
knew that I put my pills in there right. Something happened, but I didn't know how it happened. I thought, okay, how's this possible? While Jacinda Rearick is recuperating from back surgery, she senses a presence in her home. I couldn't get a clear view of what it was, but there was something in that room with me. I knew something weird was going on, but I didn't know what it was. At first, she feels uplifted, believing it to be the loving spirits of her parents who died several years ago. But now, she's not so sure. So can I get you anything before I head out? Maybe a good book or something to eat? Honey, I want you to take a look at these pictures that I took last night in the bedroom. Do you see that dark shadow in the corner? Babe, there is nothing in the house. How can you say that? You can see something. It's right here. Look, you've been cooped up in this house for months. You're all stressed out, and you're not feeling great. I totally get that. Todd has always been very skeptical of the paranormal. He would always listen to what I had to say, but he always had his own opinion. He was very adamant that he did not believe. You know what? You should start painting again. You were always so good at it. It would be like a release for you. You know, get your mind off of things. So you get better. Todd and Justin just kind of really didn't respond they just kind of blew it off they didn't believe me In the fall, Jacinda and Todd's son, Justin, also finds himself housebound after undergoing shoulder surgery. I'm laid up for eight months now. You really don't know how much you use your limbs until you're one out. That's when I went through my like depressed phase. I can't lift, I can't go to work, I can't go out and do like any things that involve more than one arm. So I'm stuck here now. All of a sudden, I heard footsteps walking above me. Mom? Dad? My mom's friend took her out for dinner. My dad stayed over at work late, get some overtime. The whole house was empty except for me. Mom? Dad? I was nervous, because I was like, maybe is someone, someone in my house that I don't know, like if someone broke in.
the door was still locked. All the lights were out. Nobody was home. It was like confused. There was no doubt in my mind that I heard those footsteps and that I thought somebody was in the house. At the time, my mom was taking pictures all the time. She was convinced something paranormal was in the house. She was quite obsessed with it. There was undoubtedly something there. You could see a shadowy silhouette of a person that is unnatural, like not organically supposed to be there. I heard the pool table break. I heard someone hit the cue ball and break it. I couldn't believe my eyes. The balls are completely broken, and they weren't just a couple minutes ago. Something physical just happened, and I don't know who did it. Your heart's racing. You, you get the, the shiver down your spine. Your, your hair stands on end. I was trying to make sense of it. And as I turned to look, it was just there right in front of me. Twenty-year-old Justin Rearick is home recovering from surgery when a terrifying experience brings him face to face with a paranormal force. I heard the pool table break. The balls are completely broken, and they weren't just a couple minutes ago. There's just a black silhouette standing there. Even though you couldn't see physical features, you had that feeling that it was staring back at you. It was looking like into you, like it was seeing your, your essence. And no quicker than it came, it was just gone. I know what I saw and yeah, I, there's, there's no way I can rationalize that. There's definitely something spiritual or paranormal going on here. Justin turns to the only person who might believe him. Mom, we got to talk. OK. So you know how you've been saying that something is like in the house? You were right. I saw something. You did? Yeah. I, I don't know what it was, but was it like the a shadow? Yeah but like of, of a person. Oh my God, you saw it too? I know, I'm sorry I didn't believe you. When I told my mom, it was a mixture of like surprise and shock and fear all at the same time. She was relieved in a sense that someone else finally saw it and someone else now was completely on her side. And I finally had somebody experiencing other things in the house to actually prove that there was something there. But this thing was it was like dark, evil. It gave me that feeling that what's going to happen next, that like horror movie, when the, mu when the music starts, you know something's about to go down, but you don't know when or where. Now that her son has seen it too, Jacinda grows more anxious. So I would get up in the middle of the night, and I would just do some painting, and that pretty much was my escape.
you send me? It's me. It's okay. What? Are you all right? What's wrong? I, Honey. I, I saw it again. The, the, the shadow. It was here just a minute ago, right before you showed up. I didn't know what it was. What I was feeling and sensing was not good. Jacinda, maybe we need to talk to your doctor about your medication. No, it's not the medication. Justin saw it too. How do you explain that? I, I, I think we need to get help. Jacinda, do we really need to talk about this now? You don't believe me? That's fine. Just go. It was really difficult because I knew that I was right. I knew what I was seeing. Todd reaches an emotional impasse. His family's fixation with orbs and ghosts is enough to send him off the deep end. My mom and I, we, we both were convinced something was going on. And anytime we would bring it up to my dad, it was just an instant, like a switch. You just flip the anger on. <sighs> my dad put a wall up. He was trying to distance himself from, like, not only me, but everybody. I don't think he realized how much he was drinking, and I don't think he realized how he was coming across. One night, Todd surprises his family by coming to dinner. <laughs> hey, honey. Hey, Dad. This is nice. Yes, it is. Yeah, good of you to join us. It's like old times. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's Grandma's recipe. Greatest potatoes ever. Being that Todd was being so distant, he very rarely ate you know, dinner with Justin and I, which was something we always did as a family. So this one particular night, he did sit down with us, which I was hoping was going to kind of make everybody reconnect again. So what'd you do today? Stuff. You do stuff with your arm? I mean, yeah, a little. Um... Todd, you OK? It's nothing. I'm fine. Honey, are you OK? He just was having trouble breathing. Honey, you're shaking. Really, Dad, Todd. you don't look so good. His color didn't look good, and his coordination was off. Something definitely was wrong. Oh, honey. Honey? <gasps> dad. All of a sudden, my dad put his hand on his chest. He had a face of pain. <laughs> For weeks, the Rierick family has been on edge. Todd's wife and son insist the house is haunted, while Todd doesn't believe them. He got to the point where he didn't even want me to show him anything, or he didn't want me to tell him anything. He didn't want to hear it. He'd just make it matter. So I just didn't really say anything. I definitely think that it caused, like, strain and extra stress in the family. But I don't think he meant to do it to hurt everybody. I think it was the only way he could think of to deal with it, because he didn't want to accept the fact that something could be going on. Dad, you OK? Dad. What is it? Todd! Todd! We went to the ER, and they ran every kind of test that you can imagine, and they still couldn't find anything wrong. But he was extremely weak. Everyone was just baffled. Looking back at it, there's, there's always that possibility that it wanted to show off its power. It wanted to make a mark, and it chose him. 
because at the time, I, I, it might have felt that he was most vulnerable, but he made it. Ah, uh, that's not necessary. I'm fine, Jacinda. Throw your back out again, we'll both be stuck in this house. <laughs> that's not funny, Todd. I'm scared. You almost died. I started to wonder if what was going on in the house was affecting his health as well. Come on, the doctors checked me out. They say that I'm fine. You're not fine, Todd. You were on the floor. Something is happening in this house. I don't feel safe here anymore. Come on, just sit there. Don't make it something that it isn't. You're exhausted and I'm exhausted. Let's just go to bed. I was scared and I was trying to figure out, was there something evil in the house? He totally did not agree with that at all. But I felt like that episode was a warning. When I looked at the painting, it literally was melting, like it was just running. <laughs> These physical things were happening, and now everything in the house was escalating. It makes you feel helpless. Between the ever-present fear and debilitating health issues, it seems everyone in the Rierick home is spiraling out of control. looked like a corpse that was starting to decay. <gasps> My body was just wrapped with these black tentacles. I couldn't move. I couldn't lift any of my arms. I just felt like I was being held down. I couldn't scream. I was just like, oh my god. The supernatural activity in the rear rig house reaches a new and frightening level when Jacinda finds herself under attack. Ah! 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 Ah!
Ellen, what's wrong? What, are you okay? What's wrong? <laughs> there were, there were black tentacles. They were, they were, they were tw twisting all around me. They were suffocating me. I, I couldn't yell to, to, for help. You need to calm down. Just breathe. breathe. You, you were dead. And it, it was the most horrifying thing I've, I've seen all my life. Calm down. You just had a terrible nightmare. <laughs> I didn't know what was happening, but it was definitely trying to either hurt me or my family. What? Just settle down. You just had a terrible nightmare. That's all. This is a nightmare. That's it. I am not crazy, Todd. There is something wrong with this house. You've got to believe me. Just lay down. Just come. Get some rest. You just had a terrible okay. nightmare. That's all. But it's clear to Jacinda, she'll need to fight this entity on her own. It got to the point where I didn't care if Todd believed me or not. I knew I needed to reach out and try to find somebody to help me because I was scared for myself because it physically tried to harm me. I didn't know what it was going to do to me or to anybody else. With the evil presence growing stronger, Jacinda calls in the Central Pennsylvania Paranormal Research Association. I reached out to this group because I wanted somebody to validate for me that there actually was something here, and also to get rid of what was in the house and try to get my family back to normal. When she mentioned the black tentacles, her husband looking like a corpse, the physical assaults, I know this case needed an immediate attention. As they approach the house, Christine, a psychic, receives disturbing images. My role in the group is lead psychic. I chose to be interviewed in shadow to maintain my privacy. Christine? What do you see? I sensed Eastern Europeans long ago camping on that property. Rituals were done sacrificing more than one animal. Sacrifices were made on this property. Rituals performed. They opened the door to the other side. What Christine saw coincides with the research I did. I found that Eastern Europeans, probably gypsies, did pass through this area centuries ago. We must be very careful once we enter this house. Do not let your guard down. The ritual open a gateway for something to come through. And whatever was conjured outside the house may very well be the entity haunting the Rerick home. Good evening, Descendant. Thank you so much for coming. Of course. Hello. Christine and Liz. Inside, both psychics sense activity in the room. I could feel a lot of entities there. There were human spirits in the house. There are spirits here with us. Yes. A man and a woman. I described two entities to the left of me in the living room. An older man and woman. They're a couple. I see their arms are intertwined. It was my mom and my dad. I actually cried because it made me feel good knowing that they were there. I sense a lot of love between them. But they're also very scared. They're here because they're trying to help you. Christine said that they were there defending and protecting me and everybody in the house. Help me. But so many bad things have happened here. They're fighting for you. Without them, it would have been much worse. Well, let's split up. Let me just take a room. Yes. We'll meet back here when we're done, OK? okay. It'll be all right. We're here to help. As the investigation continues, Liz is drawn to Jacinda and Todd's bedroom. 
as soon as I walked in, everything felt dark and heavy. Um, just a very nasty, foreboding feeling. In another part of the house, something calls to Christine. Hey there. There was a young boy in the house. Hey. Hi. Hey, are you okay? I felt a deep sense of dread. A uh, fear, too. Liz also feels the fear. I saw the tentacles. They started coming out from the closet, under the door, underneath the furniture. It was all around me. For more a haunting, visit DestinationAmerica.com. While investigating the Rerick family home in rural Pennsylvania, two psychics make separate encounters with the same dangerous entity. For Christine, it masquerades as a child. I got physically ill. I got severe nausea. I did get quite dizzy. This little boy was an inhuman entity. Liz! What, what happened? Are you okay? I was attacked. There were, there were tentacles covering my body. I... It wanted to just wrap itself around me and take me. It wanted to pull energy right out of my body. I saw it too. What we're dealing with is a demon. I have never come across one so powerful. We needed to figure out a way to get rid of this thing as fast as we could. The team breaks the news to Jacinda. The investigators believe that the spirits of her parents are there for a reason. Jacinda's parents were trying to protect her from something very evil in the house. This demonic entity was the one that was causing danger and would hurt the family. But how, how could this happen? The investigators confirm that whatever Christine saw outside the house is the same demon haunting the Rerick family. A ritual was performed here long ago by a group of travelers passing through the area. It created a, a gateway to the other world and that's how the demon came through. A murderous act was committed. Immediately, rituals were done to keep the evil away. When in fact, all it did was let some enter. They actually came in. But we've lived here for almost 14 years, and there's never been anything like this before. Why is this happening now? You were weak. An easy target. And it was waiting for an opportunity to attack. This demonic entity was brought in through this portal centuries ago and remained dormant on the property. I was waiting for the proper time to come in to Jacinda's house when Jacinda was having major physical issues. During these times of long-term illness, this is the perfect time for a demonic entity to move in and take over a household. The demon attached itself to you. That's how it was able to infest the house and begin to infiltrate your family. Right now, the demon is breaking down each member of the family. We need to act before it goes to the second phase, possession. They said, by me having all my health issues, it attached to me, and that was a way for it to get in. And 
it just got to the point where it, you know, basically was taking over our lives. If something wasn't done quickly, I would afraid somebody would either be hurt or killed. Oh, Lord, God of our salvation, preserve this home and all who live here from all harm and every temptation from below. I prayed and I blessed every window and every door and made the sign of the cross of holy water to seal each room from the entity coming back into this house again to prevent it. Delivering them from fear of things proceeding from the darkness and attacks by demons at midday. Lord, preserve all who live in this home from all harm and all temptation from below, delivering them from fear and attacks by demons at midday. Lord, God. Oh. During this process, I felt as though an ice pick was driven through my skull. And I know this was a demon's way of defending itself. I knew I was intervening for this family. My vision became blurry. But I knew if I stopped, it would win. So I just kept on going no matter what. Let your servants and your children, protected by armies of angels, faithfully sing with one accord, Lord, you are my helper. I am not afraid. I will fear no evil. For you are with me as you are my confirmation. Oh, God, to you alone be the kingdom and the power and the glory in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, for now and ever, unto ages of ages. Amen. As I got to the final stages of the cleansing, a calmness came over the house. I just noticed the whole house. I wasn't afraid, and it just felt like the heaviness was gone and the darkness was gone and it just seemed like the whole house was filled with light again. Months after the cleansing, the family is no longer plagued by the demonic entity. And Todd finally concedes that they were victims of a supernatural force. Now that it's all over with, he now actually admits that there was something there and that it did affect him and, and it did affect me and it did affect Justin. And, you know, he's glad that they came. Before all this happened, the views I had on the paranormal were very indifferent. I didn't really think about it too much. It's something that everybody lives with, but not everybody experiences it. So therefore, they don't all understand it the way you do once it happens to you. What I would say to the people who don't believe in the paranormal is demonic things do exist, and it's just waiting to strike somebody. And you just have to be strong enough to not let it into your world. The, the button to the left. Yeah, 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 I got it. I definitely learned that good and evil can be in the same household. I still believe my mom and dad are with me. I absolutely feel without the presence of them there, it could have gotten a lot worse because all along they were there for protection for me. So I can't even imagine what we would have been dealing with if they would have been there.